Hello everybody, my name is Kubla, I'm bringing you guys View Replaycast number 31. And a uh, few things to say before the game starts. One, I am still recovering from a slight cold, so you guys may hear me mute the mic a few times to cough and sneeze and stuff. But another thing is also, the um, if you guys want to have a chance to win the Inscrutable Zeal set for Rubik, definitely go check out my video. The, um, it should be, or it'll, it'll be linked um, somewhere around here. I'm not too sure where I put it, but it'll be linked here. Uh, you guys can definitely go follow that link um, to my video, 30 Minutes or Less, Episode 1, The Introduction. It'll give all the details that you guys need to know in order to win that set. Um, just basically follow those instructions and you guys will have a chance to win it then set. But please hurry because you guys have nine days, nine days left to actually win that. Because today is the 21st, the contest is ending on the 30th, and I'll be doing the drawings on probably the 2nd of next month. Not necessarily the 1st. Actually, hold on. I might, I might wait till the weekend. Yeah, because the 1st is a Wednesday. Wednesdays are usually bad days for me. So probably, probably the 3rd, which is a Friday. Um, I'll be announcing on all the win all the winners and stuff in another video. Um, but anyway, outside of that, um, this is a view replay cast. So as always with the view replay cast, I'm not going to tell you guys who sent it in because the general assumption is the person who sent it in is probably on the team that won, and that will be spoilers for you guys, and we don't want no spoilers here. So let's go ahead and avoid all the spoilers in one second, please. All right, I think I'm good. <clears throat> nope, not good. Okay, mostly good. All right, that's much better. Um, but yeah, these guys are just uh, we're in all pick. Um, not gonna tell you guys who sent it in. Already said that. Uh, not gonna tell you guys how long it lasts. I know how long it lasts, but you guys don't. So ha, I take that. But let me go ahead and hide this. So, what? Wrong button. I accidentally paused it. Oh God, play. Oh jeez, that's so scary. Say free camera is on, and that is hidden. Cool. Everything is all ready to go. We're just waiting for everybody to pick their heroes and go. So, I need to bring up these, what, last into the dies, and, oh man, it didn't go through. I hate it when it does that. Darn it, Dota. Why are you no free camera? Anywho. Excuse me. I'm the whole entire rating size pick, so let me go and do that introduction on this side first. I'm starting off with this Ursa we see. On this Ursa warrior, we see Namek C, or Namek C on him. Moving over to the Zeus, we see Lord. On him, <clears throat> on this Windrunner whose name looks. Uh, never mind, I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything about that. Um, blah blah blah. On that Windrunner. Moving over to this Phantom Lantern, we see Ve912 or 912, however you want to pronounce that. I think last but not least, for the Radiant side, there's on this Chaos Knight. Actually, no, I think I missed the Phantom Lantern. On this Chaos Knight, we see <clears throat> Your Nightmare on this Phantom, uh, on the Chaos Knight. And actually, no, I did. Alright. So Phantom Cancer was announced. Yes, guys, I'm still calling him Phantom Cancer because he does spread like cancer. It's like he just makes so many illusions. Anyway, moving up to the dark side. Um, on this Jakira, we see Lazarin on him. On this on this Nikes, we see Walker, Texas Ranger on him. Uh, moving over to the mid lane, we see your band, or you are band, period, on that clockwork. Which I'm actually kind of excited to see because Clockwork has been doing a lot of work as of recent. Uh, he's been a pretty popular pick because those cogs are so freaking cost efficient. <clears throat> as far as uh, the damage they do and the amount, uh, man, I mean, sorry, the amount of spam ability they have, and we're in LPQ, which is actually pretty sad. Uh, moving on to Z Brat, okay, um, we see Rubik. Oh wait, oh, moving on to this Rubik, we see Z Brat, Z Brat KO on him, and I think I missed one. Yes, I did miss one. The most important person on the map, of course, because this is a freaking spirit breaker, guys. We got a freaking spirit breaker in the house. We see Kaz or Kaza on that spirit breaker. And I mean, really, I'm, I'm not too sure how to feel about these lanes so far. Um, top lane seems a little, this seems a little standard. These guys are playing 2-2-1, two, two, or 2-1-2, two, two, which is basically two in the top, one in the mid. And, oh man, Jakiro throwing out a ice, or throwing out a dual breath for a little bit of harassment, but misses everything. Uh, cost, that's a lot of mana for one thing. Compared to Ice Pass, Ice Pass used to, co used to cost 70 mana, but now it costs 90. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and hide this, that's in the way. So as far as the lanes matchup go, oh man, huh? we see Clockwork taking a lot of damage, but he's dealing a lot of damage to Zeus, he might, yeah, he, I don't think he'll be able to make it out alive. Uh, Zeus needs one more Thunderbolt, oh, okay, he does have Thunderbolt. He throws out a Static Shock and just shoots him away. See, so yeah, that's what I was just about to say, I mean, I think, I think Zeus will have the better of this lane, mainly because as soon as he gets the points out of his, uh, Static Field, that's pretty much all of Clockwork's HP. So once Zeus hits, uh, level 3, level 4, uh, he's, he's gonna be pretty much destroying Clockwork every single time. Uh, basically throw a Lightning Bolt and then have Static Field do the rest of the damage, so... Anyway, um, as far as the lanes go out, uh, top lane, like I said, Windrunner, Phantom Lancer versus Jakiro, 
and Nikes, and Nikes is actually in the jungle a little bit, so we might be seeing him jungle more. Let well, Jakiro get that level 6, which is actually not really all that important. Uh, moving on down to the bottom, our mid lane, we saw Zeus and Clockwork, we already saw that. And on his bottom lane, we see Ursa and a, uh, we see Ursa and a Chaos Knight. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be a jungle Ursa or a laning Ursa. Um, sometimes when you see, even when you see a jungle Ursa, they do stay in lane for like the first three levels or first four levels, so they can have a little bit easier time in the jungle. But usually when you see those, they go for um, early points of Fury Swipes as opposed to going for overpower first, which this Ursa did go for. Um, basically, oh man, that, that region got thrown off, or got put off of Ursa by that Rubik, um, good play by him. And he's going to continue to harass the crap out of Ursa. Ursa's not having a fun time here. That's, that um, style shit was not enough. Um, meanwhile, we see, there we go, we got a stun going on top of Rubik. It's, it's only a one second stun. Telekinesis from Rubik on top of that Ursa. Ursa's going to go attack that Spearbreaker. These guys can't turn around and go for the kill, but I think Rubik needs to know Telekinesis before they can actually do that. <coughs> meanwhile, Clock, Clockwork did rush Bottle. Um, I'm not too sure if he went for bottle first, but uh, if he did, no, actually, no, he probably didn't. He had a lot of region. and got to use all up. I was just about to say, because if he did go for bottle first, I would not recommend that at all. But by the looks of it, he did have a lot of region. Um, he hasn't been out of his lane all that much, and Zeus has been doing a lot of damage to him. He is almost full HP. I think, yeah, he had a lot of region. And now he has a region room, so it's actually really, really convenient. So he can actually go in and do a lot of damage to Zeus, and Zeus can't really do anything about it unless he kills him outright. Meanwhile, we got an engage going out bottom. We got Spear Breaker charging on top of CK. CK's in a lot of trouble. A few more auto attacks, and he goes down. First blood goes to that Rubik. Probably prefer to see that on Spear Breaker, but Spear Breaker doesn't matter. Spear Breaker will get his gold from his ganks, uh, which is what we expect to see him do consistently uh, once he gets uh, Max in his Greater Bash and also get at least uh, probably two points in that great, or Charge of Darkness. <coughs> Let's see how Lifesteal is doing. Lifesteal so far, he's doing he's doing well. He's in the jungle. I mean, it's Lifesteal. He's built for the jungle. Uh, that life leech, so OP. Uh, Jakiro, he's, he's holding his lane pretty well. The tower has taken no damage, surprisingly. Um, these guys aren't really invested in pushing, or interested in pushing all that hard. And it's actually, as soon as I say that, they start auto attacking people, so they are pushing a little bit. Uh, Windrunner is max. It looks like she's putting two points in her shotgun shot, and one point in her power shot. Usually when you see a Windrunner in a suicide lane, she actually puts more, or like, at least one point in Windrun. And um, Max is power shot for farming, but I mean, she, she has somebody here to help her out. So, Shackle Shot is a little bit easy, or a little bit better. And there's a Spirit Breaker saying, We see you. I'm not too sure why he's saying, We see you. A few seconds, please. Alright, guys, don't panic, don't panic. I'm good. I haven't died just yet. I am still alive. Still, still surviving, still kicking. Clockwork is rotating down for the rune. The rune is an invis rune. Clockwork is going to be pretty happy about that. He might be able to go in for a gank. Uh, that would be actually a really nice gank. Um, only if this lane was pushed up a little bit higher, I think. Uh, basically, Clockwork is just derp one up and throw out those cogs, and that's CK getting stuck. All CK can do is reality rift and hope that he can actually get out of the cogs, but I, I, don't, I, don't, think you re I don't think you can reality rift over cogs. But no, Clockwork decided to come back mid. He's going to continue to go toe-to-toe go -to -toe with Zeus. And I still think Zeus has the best, the higher advantage. Uh, he needs to put a point in that static field to make sure his advantage gets pushed that much higher. Um, yeah, sure, static field pushes his lane, but he doesn't care. Um, if, he, if he can get a quick kill on Clockwork, then Clockwork can't farm that anyway. So, uh, I, I honestly think Zeus needs to take a little bit more of a risk and uh, put a point inside the static field. For that, I mean, that's 5% health reduction. That's, that's HP removal. And that's quite a bit. Especially when Clockwork's at full HP. Now we see Ursa chasing that Spirit Breaker. That's a bad idea because there's a Rubik here. There's also a Spirit Breaker as well. Uh, Ursa is getting a little bit overzealous. He, he only has two points in that overpower, so that's only four auto attacks that he's going to be attacking at max speed. He only has two points of Fury Swipes as well. Well, Fury, Fury Swipes does a massive amount of damage. I'm actually surprised that um, Ursa's not being a little bit more aggressive, just slapping Spirit Breaker in the face a few times uh, without overpower. Um, basically, just casually walk up to him, punch him in the face. Oh, oh man. Zeus popped his ulti. He's getting, you know, he got caught up by uh, Clockwork. Clockwork might be going down. One more tower shot will kill him, but no, there's no tower shot in range. But the creeps will, might be able to finish one. One more volley is all they need. And there goes a the kill. Clockwork goes down to the creeps. But Zeus still getting credit for that kill. But Zeus did pop his ulti, so now everybody knows where everybody is. They see Lifesteal's in the jungle. Um, I'm not too sure why the top lane's not as aggressive, or not any more aggressive. Uh, they, they, could be, they could be really, really aggressive versus the Shakira. Because all Shakira could do is throw down an ice path and pray that somebody TP's in to help him. Lifesteal's a long ways away from actually helping him. He's building his power traits. He did go for that um, Belt of Strength, which I think if you guys uh, listened to my cast before, you know that I recommend going for that more stat efficient item. 
The only exception I could probably see is a life steal because life steal is life leech does not scale off of the damage that he does, but more so the HP that I have left. So it'll probably be more efficient for him to go for the global more efficient for him specifically to go for the global haste first to increase his attack speed as opposed to increasing his damage. Because the more damage that he has, the less HP HP they have for his next life leech. So little small things like that to just further further your advantage. That was always what you had to think about. But he did go for that more static efficient item first. So I mean, even still, he has more HP. He can survive in the jungle a little bit longer as opposed to um, having the risk of dying. Because that's uh, eight. What was that eight? Yeah, eight, six strength. Six strength translates into fourteen times six, or no, nineteen times six. So uh, whatever that number is. Anyway, we see a Hatred on Ruben. That's a very dangerous thing. These, uh, he can actually go in for a quick kill on top of either one, either CK or Ursa. Probably Ursa would be the easiest kill because CK can throw a Storm Bolt and get a kill. Uh, speaking of which, CK only has one point in that reality rift, and he, only, he, and he also has two points in Chaos Strike. I think uh, we've seen, uh, I've seen this a few times. Um, when you're in CK, you want to match your reality rift as, as fast as you possibly can. Um, also, your Chaos Bolt. So, a lot of times, what you commonly see CKs do is they put all their points in Chaos Bolt, all their points in Reality Rift, and then they go for the ulti, and then they go for stats, and then they go for the ulti again, and then they go for um, finally Chaos Strike. Basically, because Chaos Strike is not going to be hitting all that hard. Yeah, sure, it's increasing your crit damage to 20, but your crit chance is only 10%, which means that you have to attack a little bit or pretty fast in order to actually proc it. And also, on top of that, um, he doesn't really have a much damage to crit. Um, I think right now if he crit, he'd be critting for about 140, which is not a lot. Especially considering the fact that later on he's going to want to have a lot of damage. A lot of physical damage to begin with. Anyway, so we got Clockwork coming out with the Nikes Bomb. He has, his, he has his Rappel up, but there is no Zeus to be found. Zeus is actually hanging out down bottom, finds himself a region rune, but he still might be going down. Clockwork is on the chase. I'm not sure if Zeus saw Clockwork pass by that tower. But Zeus is rotating down bottom, yes, okay, Zeus is now spotted out by this Dire Ward, and there's a telekinesis from Ruby Clockwork will probably be rappling in soon, and I think Ruby might be seeing the end of his life, no, he will not be seeing the end of his life, his life still jumping out, his everything gets thrown on top of Zeus, Zeus goes down pretty darn easy, and here comes a rotation from the Radiant, it's a bad rotation, these guys need to get out while they can, open wounds from, oh, oh, open wounds thrown on top of Ursa, uh, ulti from Spear Breaker thrown on top of him just for good measure, and CK is on the run. CK does not want to be here anymore, there are four people from the Dire here, and they're ready to kill you, and he is, he is, uh, Wisely backing up, he's buying himself his uh, belt of strength to make sure he stays alive, and he's heading towards CP shop. He's gonna throw a chaos bolt on top of Ruby. He'll be able to pick him off. I don't think Spear Breaker can follow up. Actually, I take it back. Uh, Spear Breaker does not have his ulti though, so it will not be enough damage to actually kill him. So chaos not getting a free pick off. Two TPs coming in down bottom. Very late TP response. Zeus is coming out here. He wants to get kills on top of the Spear Breaker, and there's a pause from Clockwork. Tactical pause, guys. Tactical pause. OP. It says our friend has inst uh, insane lag, so they need a little bit of pause. <coughs> and it's instantly resumed by Zeus. Zeus wanted to go for the kill on the Spear Breaker, but Spear Breaker did back up. There we go, we got a repause from Jakiro. I wonder who's the one who's zagging, or zagging, lagging. And these guys don't want to pause at all. Jeez, just a few seconds, all they ask. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Anyway, so while they're, while they're trying to debate that, let me go ahead and take a look at the items real fast, because you guys probably don't want to know what everybody's carrying so far. We see Phantom Cancer, sorry, Phantom Lancer has those Tranquil Boots, which Tranquil Boots have not been the boots of choice as of recent, mainly because all the nerfs have been successful at fending away carries from holding on to those, because that, that minus, or that slow in movement speed is actually crucial in those big team fights. So, he'll probably switch to power charts very soon, uh, but he is going for his defusal while he's here. Um, he has that room with the match eye, so he can have a little bit more of a mana pool and get ready to harass a little bit more on top of everybody. Uh, we got Life Steel standing still for a few seconds. He might be DC. I don't know what's going on. Uh, there we go. He finally moves. Uh, Jakiro throwing everything down. Throws out the ice pad. Throws out the macro pie. He might be able to get the kill on top of Windrunner, or he might lose his life. Uh, as a fan of to shoot him away, but Windrunner took a lot of damage in that engagement. Macro pie. I still think macro pie is probably one of the worst skills in the game. But if you stand still inside of it, you're going to take a quite a bit of damage. That's a hundred, sorry, that's a hundred damage per second. Um, four, seven seconds. So it's a max of 700 damage, which I still think is pretty crappy. Um, but that's all the HP one owner has. So, I mean, that's that's enough to kill her. Uh, we see Zeus popped the ulti. He did get a kill on top of Clockwork mid uh, with that ulti. And uh, they're also able to scout out everybody, see all the wards and whatnot. And a few seconds, please. So I obviously need another cost grab. <coughs> Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Uh, that was disgusting. Anyway, uh, we got Zeus rotating top. Zeus does have enough mana to actually do stuff. He has two healing styles, which I think is a big blunder. I mean, he needs to go ahead and buy some region. Uh, Zeus does attack. commonly, or Zeus do, Zeus's do commonly go for bloodstones. I wouldn't recommend going for bloodstone that fast, but he could go for 
a four staff, he could go for the ring of health and prep or in in pre preparance in pre to prepare to go for that uh, other thing. And we got Spirit Breaker charging. Spirit Breaker charging somebody. I don't know, but he finds himself a Zeus. Yeah, he doesn't have enough mana for his ulti. Maybe if he tries switch, he'll be able to catch that ulti. But I don't think he'll be able to get it. Yes, if he tries switches, he'll have enough mana for his ulti because he only needs 125. But it doesn't matter. Clockwork gets a wrap on him anyway. And Zeus is caught out. Zeus is caught out in a bad way. Zeus is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Zeus will be going up, but Clockwork will be losing his life to Phantom Lantern. Uh, meanwhile, we got Jakira coming around, throwing out all the abilities that he has. He can't throw Magma Pride. No, he has no mana for it. And Windrunner is running away. Uh, will she be able to make it alive? Yes, she will be able to No, she will not be able to make it alive. There's too many people here. Shackle shot on two, but it doesn't matter. Jakira finishes her off, and she goes down. Beautiful ice path by him, by the way. Moving on to his Earth, so he's on his way out. He has his Ring of Basilis. I think he's going for a fast Blads. Which might be a mistake because uh, the Dyer have a lot of tools to actually stop him from killing that Vlad, or from killing that Earth, from killing that Roshan. Uh, typically, fast Vlad say you want to go for early Roshan. And while we have a pause, cool. I'll mute for a second, or not. I won't mute for a second at all. <coughs> Let's continue going. So, <laughs> reported. So somebody's obviously having lag issues. I'm not too sure who it is. I think it might be Life Stealer. Life Stealer's going for that hand of Midas. Or no, sorry, he's going for the armlet. He did go for that glove of haste first. Uh, for the armlet. I think at this point in time, I mean maybe going for the excuse me, maybe going for the helmet of dominator or helmet of iron will will be a little bit better because it gives him that region, also gives him that armor. I think it gives him five armor and three region. Yep, five armor and three HP region, which is actually really good. And it's also a nice setup for your armlet. But uh, I mean, he's he, he has he has everything he wants. He has treads. He has glow of haste. There's nobody really challenging him. He hasn't been really contested at all. He has one kill and one assist to his name, so nobody has really been bothering him. And I think let me go and take a look at the uh, he, and he has the most lies his on the map, uh, which is actually not a lot. This uh, which is actually not a lot going this at this point in the game. Uh, would you? Comparatively, comparatively, what you see in other games. I uh, see Spirit Breaker charging mid. He's going all in on top of Zeus. Zeus is be nowhere to run for him. Uh, Spirit Breaker does have his ulti. He's going to go ahead and pop it. There's ulti. Zeus is pretty much gone. Uh, Spirit Breaker needs one more auto attack, and he gets it. And there goes Zeus going down. So Spirit Breaker getting free kills. Uh, if he gets more kills like that, and he had to earn shadows as well, so that was a free earn charge. Uh, he'll be able to charge top soon in another four seconds, and that's a free kill for him as well up there. And I see so many healing cells so late. I'm not too sure what's up with these healing cells. Um, guys, please don't please don't have healing south so late. Unless you, the only the only excuse for a healing south this late is if you have a big engagement and you want to make sure you stay alive. You want to make sure you have that region to keep you alive. <laughs> Same thing for clarity potions. Clarity potions aren't really all that big, but Jakiro's Jakiro's getting ready for a big engagement, so I, I can see why he's had the uh, clarity potion. And I think if these guys are paying attention a little bit more, they can see that the ring of Basilius uh, buff is on top of somebody. And uh, these guys these guys need uh, these guys need a pause apparently. This is report Ursa. So they obviously need to pause, but nobody's pausing. And guys, if somebody needs to pause, at least give them a minute. Um, give them a minute, and then you say, no, I'm not going to pause anymore. But at least give them the first minute, because I know we've all been in that situation where, where we've all had those bad, um, bad lag spikes, and we needed to pause for like attack. three minutes, but we just, and nobody will pause for us. And then we come back to the game, and we got an abandon because nobody paused for us. So I mean, just pause for like at least, at least a minute. I mean, be considered and give them at least a minute. I mean, pushing over, pushing anything over two minutes is really pushing it. I mean, if somebody asks for five minutes, I mean, yeah, sure, you can say no at all. Or you can say, yeah, we'll give you a minute or two. But I mean, geez, at, at least give them some time. Uh, but I think everybody will spot it out. Spirit Breaker does have a wild life steal inside of him. He is going to charge down bottom. Uh, who are they charging? They're charging Zeus. Zeus is easy prey. Uh, life Stealer can just stay inside of Spirit Breaker and let Spirit Breaker do all the work. Uh, Clockwork is going to rapple first. And Clockwork will be able to actually do all the damage. What did Rubik steal? Rubik steal Zeus ulti. Oh my gosh. Rubik picks off the kill. He's also able to scout out everybody. He's in a little bit of trouble now. CK will throw that Chaos Ball. And that will be a free kill for him. Reality Rift fall in. But no, it wasn't enough damage. Uh, life Stealer jumps out. And <laughs> Rubik turns around and jukes him. Uh, meanwhile, Ursa is getting caught out as well. Ursa trying to build that ladder was off like I said before and there's a uh, Ursa going down so Rubik stayed alive <laughs> so Rubik surprised like I said surprised to stay alive and he has Zeus ulti as well so that's, an, that's a really nice scouting ability also really nice to help out in team fights more so scaling ability, and here's uh, Jakiro throwing all his abilities, catching everybody inside of it. Wonder Woman taking a lot of damage from it. Um, that is almost all her HP that she just lost, and Jakiro's on the run. He's going to be getting perma chased, and there's also a Zeus up here to help out as well. Ice back from Jakiro will be hitting on two. Oh no, it will be hitting on one, and here's Jakiro's life going down. Uh, Spirit Lance will be killing him, and then he goes, he goes down. 
We got TP coming in from uh, CK mid. CK wants to farm this wave out, push it out a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, we got a three-man dire push down bottom. These guys want to kill the tower. They, they have so much hate for this tower down there. Um, they could potentially go for a trade, trade that bottom tower for a mid. Or sorry, trade that mid tower for a bottom tower, but I, I, I don't really think it'll end up in a trade. So let's go ahead and look at what they can do after this. Uh, they can probably TP and, um, TP and save that mid. Um, also, they, or Spirit Breaker could charge and go for a kill on top of somebody. He needs to charge now if he's going to charge. Yeah, he needs to go ahead and charge now if he's going to charge because that tower is going down. The tower, that, there we go. He's charging now. Uh, Zeus is going to be a target once again because Zeus is a very easy pick off. Uh, all Spirit Breaker has to do is just charge him, throw his ulti. Life still can stay inside of Spirit Breaker. That's like his free car right there. He's moving faster than maximum moves, by the way. That's a level 4 charge. Life still jumps out just to make sure that he goes down. Throws out the open moves. Very, very. Um, a lot of overkill going on. I think Zeus throws ulti as well, but or that was Rubik. Yeah, that was Rubik. Rubik threw out Zeus ulti. Rubik has another. Oh, Rubik will have enough time to use it one more time, I think. Actually, no, no. He won't have enough time to use it one more time. That, that spell's gonna be gone uh, whenever he, it comes off of uh, cooldown. <laughs> And we got three of your diary rotated mid. So, so far, I mean, the, the Radiant are really suffering mainly because uh, Ursa hasn't really been making all that much of an impact. He's trying to go for a Vlad's, but this is going to be a very late Vlad's. Um, he has, yeah, there you go. His Vlad's is up, so he's going to run for Roshan. But, I mean, even if he gets Roshan, he's still going to be dying pretty darn fast. And um, as far as the item progression goes for everybody, the biggest items so far are basically Phantom Lancer halfway to his Ring of Basil- or Phantom Lancer halfway to his Diffusal Blade, and uh, that's really- oh, Arm Level and Bike still, that's a really big item. Um, that's really it. Ursa's build up Vlad's, but like I said, that's not really all that useful, because all he can do is run for Roshan, and that's it. Uh, Curry's trying to get on his Vlad's, there you go, Vlad's up on Ursa. Ursa's gonna go for Roshan, he has a naked, uh, Vlad's, and we see, uh, Gazer happen on top of somebody, Clockwork gets a kill on top of Zeus, and now he's on the run for Phantom Cancer, because Phantom Cancer's on the run, or Phantom Cancer chasing him. And here's Ursa going for Roshan. So all they have to do is just check Roshan, and they'll be able to get a free kill. I think Roshan might be able to kill him himself. But here's the other problem, they have no clue that this is going on. The Spirit Breaker charges right past it, he doesn't charge into it. So this is a free Roshan for the Radiant, nonetheless. So that's at least some good things for them. As Chaos Knight will begin to gauge upon. There's a pause from Zeus at the worst possible time. Now they want to pause of all times, are you kidding me? So this whole entire game, they have been not pausing. And now they want to pause at the very end. Uh, Lifestyle is going to be jumping out soon. There we go, Lifestyle is jumping out. CK is in a lot of trouble. CK does get open wounds. I think they open wounds an illusion. That was probably the wrong one. No, no, they, they open wounds the right one. Uh, Lifestyle was uh, stunned up. And there we go. CK does go down to the Spirit Breaker, finally. And Roshan did go down. Aegis is up on Ursa, and now Ursa is going to be building his other items. But typically, um, in, in, in a typical game, as an Ursa, you do not want to rush for Vlad's, because everybody knows you're freaking Ursa, you're going to go for Roshan as soon as you possibly can. So what they're going to do is they're going to wait for about that 11 minute mark, which is probably when you'll have it. And then just go and check Roshan and kill you for free. Because Roshan's going to be bashing you, you're going to be low HP, and then that's a free kill for them. But now with Ursa with this Roshan, this is not going to change, or Ursa with his Aegis, this is not going to change anything at all, because Ursa's still going to die pretty fast. I mean, Life Steel's going to eat him alive, and then there's a Spear Breaker who's going to eat him alive as well. Dyer's Heck, Jakiro can eat Ursa alive, to be honest. So Ursa's going to be living twice, but he's going to be dying twice, so it means that's, that's going to take everybody five more auto attacks to kill him. Uh, that's really that's really all I'm saying. So, um, I mean, the, um, the extra gold is probably the biggest thing for the Radiant, because I think, yeah, the Radiant are definitely, definitely um, leading that gold. They're 2k gold behind, which is basically two towers, but only one tower has gone down on the map. Uh, on the map. One tower on each side, so, that's, so they're really down in kills and stuff. Uh, we can see that the kill count is a little bit higher for everybody else, and we see Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Spear Lance. Oh my gosh, of all skills, I don't think his uh, illusions can actually make illusions. Actually, no, they can. And there we go, Rubik's throwing an illusion on top of Spirit, uh, on top of that uh, Phantom Lantern. Winner Runner throws out a power shot and then Chakra shot as well on top of that illusion. I don't think she caught the memo. Ice Path does miss and Winner Runner's on the run. I don't, I don't know if Rubik's illusion... Can they make illusions? Uh, Spirit Breaker is charging Winner Runner. Winner Runner's pretty much not long for life. Spirit, or, sorry, Phantom Lantern is probably next on the list. Um, yeah, here's Life Still. Life Still's gonna be jumping out. Life, uh, Life Still can definitely stay inside uh, for a little bit longer. Especially when the kills are going to be happening that easily. Phantom is on the run. Phantom Lancer can't really find any room to farm, which is so... So, the rate... So, sorry. The Diary doing a really good job. Make sure that he stays shut down. Make sure he stays focused. Uh, make sure he can't get anything. Ursa, what are you farming? He's probably farming those phase boots. Phase boots are up. 
Uh, Courier is currently coming to Fatalizer, bringing him probably his Diffusal Blade finished. Nope, just a second Blade of Valkyrie. Uh, he, he needs a uh, he needs a recipe to finish up his Diffusal Blade. Clockwork Siege in the mid tower. His mid tower is not long for life. Uh, he can just kill all his creeps. Oh, but no, he's going to decide to back away. He doesn't want to get caught up by anything. But he has support in the form of Jakiro around the backside. Jakiro's building that mechanism for his team. Uh, this will be about a 20, 30 minute mechanism. Uh, going by the way the farm's going for Jakiro. He's not really actively farming. I mean, he, ha he has how many lights? 34 lights. It's actually more than CK. Which is not good at all because you want CK to make sure he gets all that farm. Now, so far, the current high farmers are basically Lifestealer and Fanlancer, but if you look at the net worth, I'm pretty sure the net worth tells a different story. Actually, no, it tells the exact same story. So they're pretty darn close, which is actually shocking because Lifestealer has more kills and zero deaths. Yeah, he has more kills and more assists than Fanlancer. Fanlancer has one kill and two assists. Lifestealer has one kill, six assists. And Lifestealer jumps aside Spirit Breaker. These guys get ready to charge. He needs to go ahead and charge this, um, this giant cluster crap of Radiant's people right here. Tower is under Those attack. are free kills for him. Uh, basically, that's, that's an easy Nikes bomb right there. And they will be able to find himself a Fatal Lancer if Fatal Lancer decides to run too far. This is Rubik out front scout now. He has that Spirit Lance. He can't throw it on top of somebody. Spirit Breaker is around the corner. Talking is on top of um, on top of Fatal Lancer. There we go. Charge from Spirit Breaker on top of Ursa. Ursa is going to be going down. Lifestyle jumps out. And it's Ursa's life going down. Now with five more out attacks and he'll be going down. Wounder is caught inside the power cards. And where's Fatal Lancer? I didn't see Fatal Lancer. Uh, Fatal Lancer is gone. Uh, if I can, if I don't. Yeah, there we go. Fatal Lancer is caught, caught inside the cards. He goes down to the clockwork cards. And there's Ursa going down as well. Like I was saying before, guys, Ursa is basically four more auto attacks and he's dead again. So him having an Aegis is not going to change much. Uh, and we got Zeus get, or Zeus trying to run away. Spirit Breaker needs a few more seconds for a charge. Uh, he had a charge up in 8 seconds, so if they can keep Vision up long enough, then they'll be able to go for that kill. Or they could converge on top of CK if they know he's over here. Jakiro will be finding himself a CK. CK is probably going to stun him as soon as he can. Uh, nope, yeah, there we go. Jakiro's running. Spirit Breaker is probably charging now. Yeah, Spirit Breaker is charging that CK. Rubik is here to follow up as well. Uh, Zeus is trying to throw, throw all the nukes that he possibly can, but here's Spirit Breaker from the middle of nowhere. His ulti is up in another 30 seconds, but it doesn't matter. He can throw a negative earn charge and probably get the kill on top of CK, but no, he decides not to and walks away, and that's the end of the engagement. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of action happening so far. And yeah, Rubik just lost that Spirit Lance, so that's actually pretty sad to see. Because I, I, I wanted to see Rubik's illusion make more illusions, but he doesn't have a lot of attack speed. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Oh, okay, okay, so Spirit Lance does not make illusions by itself, so he needs a double. Wait, no, he needs. Yes, yeah, uh, Rubik can make more, cannot make more illusions from Phantom Lance illusions, uh, but Shadow Demon can though, because Shadow Demon's freaking awesome. Oh, we got Spirit Breaker charge with Windrunner. Windrunner is not long for life. Nikes jumps out. And one runner activates that one runner, but it doesn't matter, she won't be able to get away. Uh, she goes down to the uh, life stealer who really wanted that. And here's the final answer, he's getting caught out. A lot of damage being done to that illusion. CK's here as well, and Zeus is here as well. Zeus is popping all his spells. Uh, does he have a point inside of his static? He has one point inside of his static field. It's actually a big blunder. He needs to have that maxed out by now. That's a lot of free damage that he's going to be getting on Spirit Breaker and Life Stealer, because that's HP removal, guys. Um, actually, sorry, that's magic damage. Never mind. I was about to say, um, I thought that was HP removal, but it's not. And we got Ursa chasing Rubik. Rubik is on the run. Rubik pops that overpower. He has overpower, so he has six auto attacks pretty darn fast. I, I want to see him attack something now. He's going to attack a creep. You can do it, Rubik. Attack a creep. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty cute. So Rubik has overpower. Clockwork, clock, clockwork grapples in a very... Wow. That's a fail grapple. If I have never seen one. Um, he totally missed the Ursa. He rappled to a creep, but he stunned the Ursa because he passed right through him. But it, um, that rappel being on cooldown is not really good. Uh, Ursa has face boots and a blast. Roshan will be up in another four... Sorry, that's another three minutes. That's four minutes? That's probably four minutes. Another four minutes, Roshan will be back up. But yeah, like I, I mean, like Ursa doesn't have any farm tech to do anything. So um, typically, what you see Ursas do instead of going for a Vlad's first, what they do is they go for the face boost, they go for a Shadow Blade, they go for some form of damage, they go for some form of uh, cheap, efficient damage. So Shadow Blade's a really nice one. Uh, Chrysalis, actually, no, early Chrysalis is not a good one. But just some other items, uh, maybe some region to make sure he stays alive, and then go for his Vlad's. So that way, when you actually do have your uh, Roshan. So when you actually do have Aegis, hold on, Ursa will be killing himself on top of Clockwork, and there's Clockwork going, uh, getting killed on top of Ursa, free kills on Ursa. Uh, meanwhile, we see Rubik going down, Spirit Breaker is charging the Illusion, so that will be changing soon. Uh, Zeus pops at ulti, and Spirit Breaker did charge, there's a dust pop by Ursa, I'm oh, sorry, there's a dust pop by Spirit Breaker, and Spirit Breaker is getting a lot of damage done to him. Uh, what's Fanalite? Fanalite, I don't know where Fanalite is. Ulti from Spirit Breaker activated, I didn't see who it killed. 
or who would hit? Where's Where's Spearbreaker? What? I keep losing track of people. There we go. Spearbreaker does go down my backside. Life still is going in on top of everybody. He's man enough. He's trying to get his kill on top of Finn but he needs to turn around and punch CK a few more times so he can actually survive. The armor is still on because he could not toggle, and that was a four second stun by the way. So he, so Finn is able to turn around and get that kill. A very crappy fight on the side of the dive. They were really dropping the ball on that one. Uh, basically, stop focusing on the person who has low HP life still and just focus on CK because CK gives you a lot of regen. Um, regen's a lot of your HP every time you punch him because that's, that's a 7% life leech and 7% of that much HP is like all the HP you need to stay alive in that fight. Combined with toggling your armor, that's really a lot of HP. But anyway, at any rate, the Dire do lose, um, do lose the fight. Hindsight's 20 is 20. Oh, sorry, Hindsight's 20 is 20, so I mean, you can't really say most of it. You can't you can't really say that that was probably the best choice at the time. Cause being a spectator is easy to call these things. And Jakiro's getting closer and closer to that mechanism. Four hundred going away from that throws a free liquid attack. fire on top of that tower, make sure it does damage. That also slows the creep as well. Wait, does it slow? I don't think it slows. Nah, it just slows attack. Dual breath from Jakiro. Jakiro's ready to push his wave out so clockwork, clockwork's here to help out. And uh, yeah, four staff coming up. Or sorry, Agnes after coming up on Clockwork, so he can throw as many raffles as he possibly can. Uh, one order, she hasn't really pro been progressing at items at all. She has a ring of health, so that's telling me she wants to go for a four staff. Zeus on the other hand, Zeus has buy been buying wards, which I think is where he has two healing cells still. Guys, Zeus is wasting a lot of money on, on healing cells. Definitely just uh, just buy some form of region. Everybody knows that Zeus wants to build a. Oh man, Speedbreaker, <laughs> Speedbreaker picks up a uh, picks up a region rune. I think Zeus is trying to use all his charges. And Spearbreaker just Spearbreaker just derped on up, picked up a region rune, and just was happy about it. He's um, he has himself a hyperstone as well. He can charge whoever he decides or desires. Um, like I was saying though, um, Zeus has spent a fortune on healing cells, and healing cells aren't going to help him in these engagements. He needs to invest in some form of sustainable region, a ring of health, just a just a naked ring of health would be really nice on Zeus. It'll make sense because everybody knows that Zeus wants to build a bloodstone eventually. Um, also, he can build a Lincoln Sphere if he really wants to. And we got a gauge that happened on down bottom. Who is this? Uh, Ursa. Ursa getting caught out. He was going in for Roshan, but no, he's no longer going for Roshan. The Dyer can actually take Roshan if they really want to because he is up in a few seconds. <clears throat> I totally planned that, guys. I totally planned that. Clockwork's here. Clockwork wants to raffle somebody, but that's a very bad engagement. Especially when he has no support behind him. The top tower will be going now to the CK Illusions and also the Windrunner as well. Uh, Winrunner does not have a point in her focus fire, which I actually do agree with. The focus fire doesn't really do much. I mean, it's really good for season towers, but she doesn't have all that much damage to follow it up. But the whole entire dire side is here, and it's done, done, done. Coming in for Spirit Break, he's going to be charging through Raffle from Clockwork, catching him back, catching two inside of the clock. CK is getting caught on the other side. He's going on top of Ruby. Zeus pops the ulti. Blade Mail activated by Clockwork, and Zeus is trying to TP out. He might be able to make it out alive. No, he will not be able to make it out alive. Meanwhile, CK on the backside. CK is chasing out Ruby. He will not be able to follow up. He has an army. He needs, he's toggling like he, as much as possible can, but he keeps getting stunned with everything. And a monster kill going towards that Clockwork. Ruby able to make it out alive. A Ruby doing what he can to survive. I think it was a mechanism popped as well. Uh, Jakiro had his mechanism up. No, he did not pop his mechanism. I thought that was a mechanism pop. Actually, let me go take a look at the items. Uh, Diffusal Blade up on... Diffusal Blade is up on that Phantom Lantern. Let's see. Lottery Race Offering is up on Ursa. That's really it. Ursa is not really helping out anybody but CK and a little bit on Phantom Lantern. <laughs> Uh, CK has his armor so he can toggle it on and off. And I mean, Blade Mail on, Blade Mail on Clockwork is actually a really good idea versus Ursa. And it's actually, it's actually pretty cool because uh, what Ursa does is like, uh, Ursa wants to attack you, like do as much damage as possible to you in like the fewest possible seconds. So, having that Blade Mail, Ursa basically uses it and he can't really think fast enough. So, yeah. And I'm not too sure what these guys are talking about, but these guys are obviously talking back and forth. Continue on talking about things. Um, like I said, Ursa, by, by the time Ursa realizes that Blade Mail's up, he's pretty much done all the damage to himself. Uh, anyway, we see who's Clockwork's man it up. He goes for the kill on top of Ursa, but he goes down to the Phantom Cancer. Or sorry, Phantom Lancer. I should stop saying that shit now. And Phantom Lancer's on the run, but these guys are going for a shot, so let me go ahead and bring up the full screen mode, the high fidelity screen that you guys have all been waiting for. Spirit Worker and Life Still are going on top of Roshan. Nobody's coming in so far. And yeah, nobody is coming in anytime soon either. So Rashawn will be going out soon. Uh, Spear Breaker is getting healed up. Life Stone is getting healed up as well. A lot of damage coming to these guys. Rashawn will be going out soon. I think Spear Breaker needs to stop tanking that Rashawn though. Because he can't, he can't survive with a few more bashes. He's going to back up a little bit. Let Life Stone finish him off. And there's a... I hear, I hear a dual breath. I hear dual breath getting thrown. Yeah, they're just pushing out waves. Macro Pyre, dual breath. Ice Path getting thrown out. These guys, uh, they made him disengage in the fight. And Aegis goes to Life Stealer.
here's Rubik. Rubik's building himself a looks to be a bloodstone. I would not recommend that at all. I would recommend going for a more team fight oriented item because that's a support. You want to make sure that you, your team can stay alive. You being alive is not really all that important. Although Rubik does have a really important role to play because he can steal abilities and stuff, but there's not really many big abilities for him to steal. And uh, whoa, Jakiro. Jakiro getting a little in over his head. Paul's coming out from Life Stealer. Ursa probably wants to go get a kill on top of this. And nobody wants to pause. Uh, there's a Rubik throw on top. Can he stop Ursa? Ursa gets stunned up. And Jakiro can turn around, throw the ice path, make sure the chase doesn't commit anymore. And there's a pause. I'm sorry. There's the uh, stun throw on top of four. Wow, beautiful ice path from him. Catching four. And these guys are going to continue to run. So somebody has to go to the bathroom. So they want to pause. But nobody wants to go to the bathroom. So there we go. We got a pause coming from Ruby. Um, the Dyer probably thought they can go for the kill on top of that. Uh, Spirit Break, how close are you to that AC? Spirit Break, you need is a little bit of weight, a little ways away from that AC. So uh, he won't be having it anytime soon. But the Radiant have no patience for anything. Uh, they're continuously on pausing. And Phantom wants to continue farming. He's, he's probably frustrated, which I don't really care because it's a Phantom Lancer. So uh, he de wow, does he have what? Oh, never mind. Vlad's on Earth. So I was about to say, does he have Vlad? No. God, don't do that. Anyway, Earth has a Vlad, so Earth is getting light still to everybody. Or to all the losers and stuff. Phil Arthur needs to hurry from, um, yeah, he's built himself a Manta style. So I was about to say, he needs to hurry from finish that Manta style, but he already has a Yasha, so I didn't see that. So it's pretty cool. Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Power Shot from Windrunner. Very good uh, spell for him to scout out things and also for him to. Push the creep wave and stuff. Spirit Break is charging. Spirit Break is charging Zeus. Zeus is in a lot of trouble. Zeus will be going down. Spirit Break can't pop that ulti, but now he has no more vision of Zeus. And there's a power shot from Rubik thrown out, but Spirit Break got caught. Spirit Break got stuck in the trees. Dyer's top tower. And his life still jumping inside of that. Spirit Break is getting ready for the next charge. Top tower is getting seized. Top tower has no HP, 4 HP left. Uh, that's one auto attack from the siege creep, and it will be going down. And I, I don't think anybody will respond now. Clockwork, yeah, Clockwork can't deny. He needs to deny it now if he's going to deny Because that siege, that siege creep is going to be destroying it. Cardi the siege creep OP, man. Why are they not denying the tower? Oh my gosh. Anyway, will we see an engagement happen here soon? Yes, we will. We got, we got life still inside the spear breaker. We got Clockwork top. Clockwork needs to deny that tower. Why are you not denying that tower, Clockwork? And here we go, Zeus walking up the wrong part of the, or walking in the wrong part of the neighborhood. Phalanx will also walk in the wrong part of the neighborhood. Spirit Breaker charges the wrong person, he needs to charge the Ursa instead. I uh, throw a lot of abilities on top of the person who was already dying. Uh, he needs to, uh, he, he, sorry, he has his ulti. Uh, Phantom Lancer is dusted up. They did have vision of him, he's gonna be gonna be going down. See, one more auto attack is all they need. And he'll be going down. Clockwork's here to help out as well. He gets bashed on the last hit, and one runner's on the run. Spirit Breaker, Spirit Breaker is moving as fast as possible. He needs to throw negative earn charges. I think a negative earn charge would have killed that Phantom Lancer a lot easier. Let him focus on something else. But anyway, is that a, that's a bane? Wow, cool. That is a bane ward. I, d I didn't realize I had the whole nightmare thing at the, at the bottom of it. Uh, Clockwork gets a last. Uh, Clockwork gets a um, thing. What's it called? Rapple. Rapple's on one runner. One runner taking a lot of damage from everything, and she goes down. Clockwork also taking damage from the tower, but he doesn't care. He has a blade now. He's pretty darn tanky. He has a region rune and his bank account right now, and that's the top tower going down. One more attack. CK getting gold for himself, claiming claiming glory for his team. Clockwork should have denied that while he's up there. Cause that was free gold. That they just give away. Um, towers attacking Jakiro. Oh, sorry, towers attacking Clockwork. And the tower goes down. Uh, they could potentially push for two towers. Cause I don't. I really don't think Phantalus is in any condition to actually fight these guys. Um, he can't do it all alone. If you look at the if you look at the goal graph, the goal graph is just showing that it's been in favor of the Dire since the beginning of time. Uh, since forever, it's been in favor of the Dire. Five uh, K gold lead. Almost 6k gold lead in their favor. Moving on to the XP graph. XP graph shows. I mean, that's all I say about XP graph. XP graph is relatively irrelevant because along along the game goes on the close and closer conversion to zero. But I mean, to be honest, this game is probably not gonna last all that much longer. So, uh, yeah, XP graph showed a big, a big favor towards the dire, which is actually a uh, really good because um, the XP graph, like I mean, even though I say all that, the XP graph is still relevant because I mean, it shows you where everybody is at the current point in time. It's still relatively irrelevant though, because like if this, if this game goes on to like a seven mi 70 minutes, then that XP graph is gonna be hitting zero. Nobody's gonna care about that. But it just shows you how much how under level that the rating are. Um, the supports are probably way under level. No, no one runner specifically. Let me go and look at the hero levels. Hero levels. Yeah, Rubik gets a higher level than Ursa, one runner, and. Uh, Zeus, we got a charge coming on Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker is charging that Windrunner. Windrunner doesn't know, doesn't know she spotted out. She gets telekinesis. Life still jumps out. A lot of damage, a lot of unnecessary damage getting thrown out. A lot of resources getting used to kill Windrunner. She was dead to begin with. 
So a bit, no, not just a bit, that was a lot of overkill. They could have saved that macro pie, they could have saved that ice pad, they could have saved that spear breaker ulti, I think he ulted as well. Yeah, they could have saved everything. They could have saved that for phantom ulti, they could have saved that for ursa kill, they could have saved that for a CK kill. And CK has building what looks to be a Sanj and Yasha, he has that Sanj up. Uh, he might be going straight for a Heaven Talibur, who really knows, but he's going to be getting caught up. Rapper from Clockwork, Clockwork does have the Agony Scepter, pops that Blade Bell as well, just to make sure CK can't do anything. Rubik's still something, Rubik's still reality room. It's part of that. Me. That's probably not the spell that he wants to have, but it's a spell nonetheless. He probably wants that Chaos Bolt to have an extra disable. Uh, Reality Rift will be able to pull him in towards anybody. It'll be able to reel him in like the pro team. See what I did there, guys? See what I did there? Anyway, this fight continues. These guys are continue to hold on as much as they possibly can, but there's not too much for them left to hold on. They have two outer towers left over. Uh, Rubik gets a D we get a DC from Rubik. Hopefully he'll reconnect soon. Uh, we got a pause coming from Ice Diller. But Rubik is, or yeah, Rubik is built for that blessed though. He needs he needs one more piece before he has that. And he also needs to uh, build his boots again. Or build some other boots. And uh, AC 17 Urn Charge is up on Spirit Breaker. Has he he hasn't died in forever. He has yeah. Spirit Breaker has not died since he actually no, I'll take that back. He has died since he has his urn charge. Or, or since he has his urn. Since he has had his urn. Cause uh, you you do get urn charges. Even if you're not involved in the kill, if you're in the general area, you will get earned charges. So, as yeah, that's, that's a huge radius. So, Spirit Breaker was probably close to it and got earned charges. So, I, I, you, can't, you can't really use an earn as a nice indicator of where everybody is or what Spirit Breaker was and all these kills. But anyway, looking at the items, because this is a perfect time to look at the items. Spirit or Phantom Lancer has that Mantis style up, but he also has the Diffuse Blade. So, Mantis style be really nice for diffusing open wounds. That's really it. Uh, everything else he'll be pretty much stuck in. Uh, Spirit Breaker Charge, you can't tell if it's coming unless it's a little bit late. Even, it, actually, no, I think even if he does split from Spirit Breaker, uh, Spirit Breaker will still charge the right one. Uh, Diffuse Blade is up on him as well, so his illusions can do a little bit more damage. And also, that Mantis stopped really helping out. Oh my gosh, I'm out of cough drops. This sucks. <clears throat> Ursa is building himself, it looks to be a basher. And Windrun is trying to build a 4 staff. She needs one more, 1k more gold before she has a 4 staff. But and we see she is currently at about 300 gold. And let's see. Uh, Chaos Knight has himself an armlet and a Sanj and a Bracer as well. Bracer is OP. And Jakiro needs to run while he can. Pops that mechanism for no apparent reason. And, continue, and continues to run. Uh, moving over to the Dire Side, we see the Dire, they have a Blade Mel or Blade Melon Clockwork, also the Aghanim Scepter, Aghanim Scepter is probably the biggest thing uh, that he has. Uh, he's also built himself, it looks to be a very late Vanguard, oh no, he's been a heart, oh my gosh, Clockwork did enough gold to build a heart, guys, that's when you know things are going out of control. Does he have a heart now? No, he, he, he's, um, he's just building all the pieces. He doesn't have the full heart just yet. Uh, we see Spirit Breaker has an AC, Spirit Breaker also has two dust, and we got him, oh my gosh, Clockwork's going solo, a uh, man mode, on top of that, Spirit Runner, we also had a Spirit Breaker charge around the backside, Earth is going to be going out pretty darn easy, uh, meanwhile, Wind Runner's still alive, but she finally goes down, Phantalus is trying to go for a fight, there's a dust pop, and they know which one is the real one now, uh, Phantalus pops that Mantis style to make sure he gets rid of that dust, <coughs> but these guys know which one he is, uh, meanwhile, I see, wow, uh, Life still has himself a male near, <laughs> oh jeez, I totally missed that, and that's pretty much a team wipe, and everybody except for Fan Lancer goes down. So, why? Well, yeah, this, the Fan Lancer loses, trying to come in, trying to push a little bit, sap a little bit of mana from Clockwork. And Clockwork's getting close and close to that heart. Um, yeah, continue all the items. Uh, AC up on Spirit Breaker, like I said. Uh, Jakira has a mechanism. Rubik's still trying to build that Bloodstone. I still, still, still will highly recommend Rubik build a pipe instead of a Bloodstone or build a mech if Jakira build a pipe because having a supportive item is much more useful for your team. Having a Bloodstone on yourself, I mean, yeah, sure, you can have Bloodstone charges and Bloodstone's really nice later on. But right now, in the mid game, not really. Late game, yeah, sure. Uh, Zeus doing a lot of damage to whoever that was. Rubik, and Rubik, Rubik doesn't care. Rubik has max in all field. He also has a. Uh, Reality so he can pull people in. That's a free, that's a free, was it, 75 damage, guys. That's a lot of damage right there. Anyway, uh, and Lifesteal. Lifesteal has nothing but power treads, armlet, and a Mjolnir. Um, I actually think he's really under farm for where he's at. Uh, he has pretty much had free farm, free roam of the entire base, a uh, free roam of the entire map. And his, his gold, or sorry, his, uh, farm has actually, is actually falling behind everything. Uh, we're on a shackle shot, not latching, surprisingly. Rubik's still something, Rubik's still power shot. <coughs> and pops his wand as well. Winner is chasing that Rubik. She wants to get the kills off of him, but she might be getting charged by Spirit Breaker, who is nowhere to be found. Oh, there he is. He's over there. He's here to be found. He has two dust, but dust do share cooldowns. 
So he can only pop one. Top tower is under attack. No two deaths for you, sir. No two deaths for you. Hey, Clockwork throws a flare. Uh, CK is running towards the bottom. I really like the fact that uh, CK at least has something, um, as opposed to the Lifesteal who has who went straight for that. Yeah, no, okay, never mind, never mind. Lifestyle is a basher. Okay, now I can't really talk about Lifestyle anymore. Because uh, he has an arm, he has treads, he has a basher. I mean, what more do you want from him? Uh, I honestly think uh, going straight for that Melanary might not have been the best thing. Maybe stay, stick with the Maelstorm and then build your basher and then go for the Hyperstone afterwards. But I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. He's still going to do a lot of damage. He's still going to kill all the illusions from Phantom Lancer pretty darn fast. And having that armor, having that static armor is actually really nice. And Spearbreaker is just waiting to charge. Uh, Zeus throws out the ulti, sees Spearbreaker, Spearbreaker is starting to charge. Spearbreaker is charging in a very dangerous position. He's charging for somebody, I didn't see who. Why he's charging that far? His life still doesn't want to go this far. He's charging for Zeus, and Zeus will be going out, but Spearbreaker will be losing his life. That's a very big blunder. Life still raffles in. He's going to make sure that CK does, or so he's going to make sure Spearbreaker doesn't look all that bad. Uh, double kill for Life Stealer. And we see Life Stealer. So we see CK going down to the clockwork. Uh, Ice Path from Jakiro catches out the Phantom Lantern. And the Phantom Lantern, which one's the real one, doesn't really matter. They're at the base. But Spearbreaker taking a really big, a really big dive. Uh, if Clockwork had not rappled in, they'll both pretty much died, uh, despite the fact that the Radiant is so far back. So a little bit over aggression, but they're, they're, and they're not. Uh, the Radiant aren't really in, in all that much of a position to punish them for it. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. To be honest, I mean CK can throw a chaos bolt. That's really it. Are under attack. And I actually think CK was in the path of the charge, so he got stunned up by Spearbreaker anyway. And that's so frustrating because because the path of the charge is actually a little bit larger than Spearbreaker's size. It was actually annoying as heck. Anyway, Ice Path getting thrown out by Jakiro. There's a zap from Rubik getting thrown on top of all the illusions, so all the illusions are hitting a little bit less hard. And Rubik throws out Telekinesis on the right one, very nice. And stuns everybody, throws out a power shot as well. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go and take a look at the. Let's see, what else can we look at? Radiant's kills, death, and assist. See how he was doing. Clockwork's been involved in a lot of kills. His team has 39 kills. He's been involved in 25 of those 39 kills. It was actually a lot of kills. A life still out on the other hand. He's not that far behind. He's been involved in 23. So Radiant's that's actually pretty darn cool. Spearbreak has been involved in actually just about. So, so the, the rate, sorry, the Dire are actually fighting really good as a team. Basically, anytime Spearbreaker charges in, uh, he either has a life steal inside of him, or there's a clockwork right behind him to actually rappel in just to follow up. That's a, that's actually a really potent combination if you think about it. Because ba what that basically means is that there's always three people that are going to gank you at any time. There's always three people who, or sorry, there's always, or, it, sorry, if, if you catch out any of the supports, if you catch out a Jakiro by themselves, if you catch out a uh, Ruby by themselves, there's always going to be a either two people additional there or one person additional there. So that's that's a really that's a really huge goal of presence. Uh, you can play a lot of mind games with that as well. Ruby can pretty much go free farm anywhere he wants, and nobody's going to bother him because everybody everybody's afraid of seeing that Ruby. Everybody's afraid of seeing that Clockwork jump in. And here's a Ruby getting engaged upon. We'll, we will be seeing Clockwork rappel in soon. There's a Clockwork rappel in, and that's just what I was talking about right there. CK CK wants to go for the kill on top of that Ruby, but it doesn't matter. Clockwork just rapples in and saves him. And CK goes down. Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Chaos Bolt. Oh no, he stole Reality Rift. <coughs> and the Blood Stone is up on Rubik. I think he did buy his uh, mana, er, yeah, mana booster twice. Instead of rebuilding his boots. Not too sure which order he went, but he has one Blood Stone charge extra, so he did just recently get that. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Nope, did not, it does not tell you. Oh. And another Rapple from Clockwork. Clockwork rapples up to. I think he rappled back home. Don't know. He's pink. Yeah, he wrapped it back on. And he has his heart. That is a heart for... Oh, man. Courier. Go, Panda, go. So, Clockwork has himself a heart. So, he's pretty happy about that. Um, the Dyer are probably not happy about that. Zeus pops his ulti to see where everybody's at. Everybody's way across the map. Nobody's even close to him just yet. But they will be coming close to him. Shiva's guard coming up on that Jakiro. Jakiro is getting... When Jakiro has a Shiva's guard, that's when you know he has a lot of farm. Uh, these guys are right by a dire ward. There's no there's no observer wards for the Radiant out on the map. Um, that's really not... Or sorry, you, you really can't fault them much more because there's no vision... Or they, they haven't really had an opportunity to actually go check. And go place runes. Or wards. Jeez. I'm all messed up today, guys. But Ursa has himself a Qualium Blade, which is actually an extremely late Qualium Blade, guys. If you're going to be playing Ursa, you know you're going to be farming for a while. Go ahead and go for that Qualium Blade before you go for the Vladimir's Offering. At least before you go for Vladimir's Offering, because Vlad's very quick. The Qualium Blade costs like three, three gold compared to what a Vlad's cost. And uh, having that Qualium Blade can increase your, farm, or increase your farm speed by a lot, especially as an Ursa, who gets free damage here. Really. But Ursa has a double damage. He's killing Rokhan. He's still in life every single hit that he does.
Meanwhile, we see a blade activate or a blade bought up by Life Stealer. But Rashad will be going down. They will not. They will not be able to punish him just yet. Life Stealer might be able to get a kill on top of him. Ursa picks up that cheese, and the Aegis has not been picked up just yet. Ursa picks up cheese, and he also picks up Aegis. He's gonna TP back to base. A blade up on that Life Stealer. And was there a buyback? Nope, no buyback. And Ursa TP's out very smartly, so. So Ursa just built himself a blink dagger, a very late blink dagger that Shadow Blade would be a much more useful investment of his gold, but Shadow Blade is still expensive. It's just, it's just about as expensive as a blink dagger. Uh, Clockwork grapples into a creeps and backs away. It doesn't matter that grapple has a 10 second cool, or sorry, 12 second cooldown, which actually not a lot. So he can pretty much spam that anytime he wants. And a mana cost is actually ridiculous, 150 mana only. Uh, there's a static shield on top of him by Life Stealer, and there's an ulti from Zeus activated. He grapples in on top of Ursa. Ursa will be going down pretty darn fast. It's a free Aegis. Uh, life, sorry, CK able to catch or pull Clockwork outside of his own college, but it doesn't matter. Clock is still. He can feel Rashawn goes down. Rashawn still. Oh, sorry, no, Rashawn. H. Ursa goes down. Ursa still has cheese. That's, will he use it? No, he will not use it. And he goes down pretty easy. Uh, Winner that throws the shackle on top of somebody doesn't latch. But she's pretty much going out. Open wounds from life still getting thrown on. And CK is trying to protect, make sure everybody gets home safely, but he can't really do any damage. Uh, he does, he does, he's not nearly as fun as he wants to be. He wants to have all his jumps. He wants to have all his other items. Uh, we got Screw Breaker charging the top. He's charging illusions. Yeah, he is charging. No, he's charging creeps. He wants to make sure his top tower does not go down. He wants to make sure they don't lose any more than they have to. Uh, meanwhile, Fandalancer is back at base. Fandalancer is back at base. He's attacking Clockwork. Clockwork did get stunned up for two seconds. Ice Path throw out by Jakiro. Dual breath and probably yeah, she was guard throwing as well. He could probably throw a macro priority to make sure everybody goes down. Pop that mechanism, bait him out a little bit. Ruby will be going out regardless. A shackle shot from from Winner does latch on two, and here's a well, who's his man up? I can't see who it is. Uh, whoever that is, that's clockwork man it up. No, it's life still a man it up on top of everybody. He activates rage and light. Oh man, Fenelon is going down. Fenelon died to a macro priority. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure how offended you can be as a carry to die by Macro Pyre. Macro Pyre is a very crappy ability, in my personal opinion, it's a very crappy ability. Although it does do a nice amount of damage if you stand still inside of it. If you don't stand still inside of it, it does like no damage to you. So, yeah. There's Life Stealer going toe-to-toe with Ursa. Ursa's trying to Life Stealer more than Life Stealer, but I mean, his name is Life Stealer. He's going to steal more life. Uh, life Stealer does also have the A Blade, so he can't pop that as well. Oh my god, so much damage getting done to Life Stealer. He does pop, or Togo's arm it pretty darn effectively to make sure he stays alive. Uh, gets hit with everything, but it's not enough to actually kill him. Uh, he's talking to arm like a boss, and you see Clockwork throw a raffle on top of Zeus. Zeus does go down uh, to the Clockwork. Clockwork is just manning up on top of everybody. He has a heart, so he doesn't care. <laughs> wow, Kerr. He doesn't care. It says, PL, where are you? It says, PL's dead. Uh, but the top tower did go down, which, which is it's actually a little bit disappointing. I thought Spirit Breaker was going to say that. Okay, no, Spirit Breaker denied it. Meanwhile, Clockwork is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this tower. He can do enough damage. Nah, he can't. Radiance bottom tower. He's slowly taken down by one HP every single time. He's gonna go ahead and kill the creeps, pull the creeps towards him. And Jakiro, where are you? Yeah, Jakiro's here. Jakiro, Chief's Guard, Mechanism, Rubik, Bloodstone, build a four staff, very late four staff. Definitely build your four staff before you build your Bloodstone, it's more useful for your team. Radiance Bloodstone keeps you alive, that's really attack. it. Uh, Ursa has a blink tag, he's gonna blink in. Uh, if you're gonna blink in as an Ursa, you need to blink in, throw your Earth Shock, and then do your damage. Uh, the reason why blink, uh, the reason why Ursa's build blink daggers is to earth shock people. Uh, Rubik just stole overpower, and his damage is 100, so he can do exactly 900 or 600 damage to you pretty darn fast. And Windrunner has enough HP to survive all that. But still, if if Rubik gets a kill with that overpower, I'll be surprised. Uh, he stole stomach, he stole static or arc lightning, which is actually not a lot. And Spearbreaker, I heard Spearbreaker. Yeah, Spirit Breaker gets shackled to a tree from by Windrunner, very, very well time shackled, and Spirit Breaker will be going down. Gym is up on him as well. That's a gym of true sight dropped on the ground. Free gym for somebody to pick it up. Windrunner picks it up. Probably not the best person to carry, probably Fandalancer, because uh, his illusions can will get that vision. And that Ursa War is attacking so freaking slow, it's not even funny. Wow, that thing was attacking mad slow. 50% slow from Liquid Fire. Uh, what is it? What? What is it? What is it? What is it? It is passive. Uh, freezing or reduces attack speed on enemies. Reduces attack speed by 30. Okay, so 30 uh, attack speed by that 30 flat. And CK is getting caught out. There's a clock from clockwork a little bit uh, uh, well unwell time, but CK is getting bouncing around like a ping pong ball on those cogs, and he's trying to run away. But there's a Shiva's guard from uh, from 
Jakiro, and also, there's also a Liquid Fire as well, so he can't really fight. He's going to be going down. He can't pop the ulti. No, he doesn't have that mana for his ulti. Uh, who's Ursa gets an Earth Shock. Beautiful Earth Shock right here. Uh, he might be able to kill the Jakiro, but no, these guys are well too, way too far. Life Sword just eats him alive. Uh, just, I think, yeah, Rubik got the kill on top of him. And Clockwork is trying to run now. Clockwork's in a little bit of trouble. He caught, or sorry, he raffles up to Life Sword. Life Sword drops in and out of him. Just make sure he kills all the illusions. Zeus goes down. Put it on easy too. That Ruby, Ruby gets a double kill. Uh, Clockwork has himself a Shiva's Guard, so it's going to be a double Shiva's Guard on the side of the dire side. But they do not stack, sadly. Uh, Winner throws out a power shot. Spearbreaker is charging from base. He's charging from downtown. Will he be able to get the kills? A big question. I think he will be able to because Winner will probably come back out of base uh, by the time he gets there. And GG getting thrown out by Spearbreaker. That's pretty much GG. I mean, that, that, yeah, that, that's everybody dying. Uh, Winner is going to be going down soon. Spearbreaker is still charging him. And uh, who's this Rubik? Rubik's gonna be going down the Phantom Lancer. Oh my god, Spearbreak come at the perfect time just to save Rubik's life. And there's Spearbreak get, almost getting killed on Winner before she goes down. But anyway, that game was extremely one sided. Um, <laughs> Phantom Lancer couldn't get any room to farm. CK couldn't get it, or CK couldn't get as much farm as he needed. I, I honestly think Zeus was the biggest, well, um, was the biggest uh, weakness on the side of the Radiant. Mainly because he has so many healing styles so late as a waste of gold. He needed to go ahead and start building that bloodstone if he's going to build one. As you can see here, he still has a healing cell. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and pause real fast and talk about a few things. So this game was sent in to me by the Rubik. So it was sent in to me by... Actually, let me make sure. Yeah, it was sent in to me by ZBratKO. <laughs> So thank you ZBrackHale, thank you for sending me this game, this is a very fun game to cast. Um, you guys obviously had the huge advantage, Zeus had zero kills, which is actually surprising because Zeus has a global ulti. And he only, he only had two assists. So, I'm oh, sorry, that's Ursa. Oh man, oh man, Ursa, that's even worse. Um, but yeah, so things to talk about, uh, Phantom Lancer, he just had, didn't have room to farm, so I can't really say much about you. Uh, moving on to Zeus, uh, Zeus, stop building healing styles so late, just go ahead and start building your 4 staff if you're going to build one. Get that ring of regen, or yeah, get that ring of regen, is it ring of regen or ring of health? Yeah, get that ring of regen and just call it a day. Get that ring of health if you're going to be building a bloodstone later on and just call it a day and, and don't buy any more healing cells because healing cells were killing your economy. Um, let's say you had two healing cells here. You had two healing cells probably about the 30 minute mark. You had two healing cells probably about the 20 minute mark. You had two healing cells probably about the early game. I mean, those healing cells add up. That's about 800 gold just by itself with all those healing cells. So, I mean, that's, that's almost a ring of health. So just go ahead and build that ring of health. And then start building your other items, and then start building your other uh, other things, because uh, having that region is actually really useful. Also, build a tornado stick. Tornado stick on Zeus is actually really nice, because you can stop somebody from running, you can save your own life, and then you can just turn around and nuke them. I mean, it, it, I see Zeus do it all the time. Anyway, moving on to Ursa. Ursa, do not rush Vlad's. Please do not rush Vlad's. If Vladimir's offering is your first item, you're doing something wrong. If Vladimir's offering first on Ursa is such a risk. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even worth taking the risk because everybody knows you're Ursa. Everybody knows you want to go for Roshan. Everybody knows you want to build your Vladimir's offering as fast as you can so you can solo Roshan. So what that means is that at probably about the 11-minute mark where you have it at the fastest to the, about the 15-minute mark where they expect you to have it at the normal time or maybe even the 20-minute mark if you're very late, they'll probably be actively checking Roshan to say, hey, Ursa's here. Let's kill Ursa for free. And then take the Roshan that he couldn't finish, and then get ages for ourselves. So definitely do not do that as your first item. Um, as far as your item progression went, you build yourself a Blink Dagger, Phase Boots, and a Mithril Hammer. I would recommend building any item, any one of those items, probably except for Blink Dagger, any one of those items before you build your Vladimir's Offering. So Phase Boots, yeah, build those before your Vladimir's Offering. A naked uh, Mithril Hammer, build that before your Vladimir's Offering. A Blink Dagger, it's arguable, but still, build that before your Vladimir's offering. Because that Vlad is going to give you some nice region. That Vlad is going to give you some nice life still. But it's not going to help you out much because as soon as somebody sees just the Vladimir's offering, they're going to consistently check Roshan. You're not going to ever have any time to go forward. And it's not going to increase your kill potential at all. Um, yeah, sure, it'll help you survive in team fights, but you, you don't have any damage to back it up. So you have, you have what is that, 15% life still, I think? 16% life still and an aura. And you have a 15% bonus damage. So you have 15% bonus damage of 60 damage. Because you don't have any damage giving items. So I mean, that's not really helping you out. As you can see, it's counterproductive. Now if you had phase boots and then you went for Vladimir's offering, I couldn't talk at all. Because phase boots is a really nice item. It gives you additional 24 damage, which is not a lot. But also gives you that movement speed, which is actually the most important thing. So you can chase down anybody and kill them. And then get some free gold that way. And then farm up your Vladimir's offering off of that. And also it'll help you run in the jungle a little bit faster. And also, oh by the way, um, not only does it give you, well hold on, yeah, the twenty, the twenty-four damage is actually really nice because it also matches well with the Vladimir's offering uh, once you get that. And in 
in your transition to building up to that vitamins offering. Um, you can have that ring of facilities, you can have that ring of regions to sit in your inventory, have those phase boots, and then build something else, and then finish your vitamins offering at probably about the 20 minute mark, and then go for a free roll shine at about the 21 minute mark. Because by then, everybody's saying, okay, Earth is not rushing for vitamins offering. So we have other things to worry about, like we have to worry about this Fenelite who's getting out of hand, we have to worry about the CK who's getting out of hand, we can't worry about Ursa. So definitely do that instead of rushing for that Vladimir's offering. Um, yeah, sure, buy the pieces for Vladimir's offering all you want, buy that Ring of Assyrians and hold on to it for a long time, buy that Ring of Region and hold on to it for a long time, but don't finish your Vladimir's offering so fast, because that is a lot of gold that you wasted. Because that is 900, I'm sorry, one, yeah, 1,200 gold that could have went towards something else and that's basically counting the morbid mask and the recipe those are two things that could have went towards something else those are two things that could have went towards your face boots two things that could have went towards your blink dagger so long story short don't rush for vitamins offering so early uh moving on um basically because you want to increase your kill potential for kill potential first which is the main the main overarching uh reason you went on to wind runner wind runner um you were getting caught out a lot you were being a little bit more aggressive than you should have been um definitely definitely Get your four staff as fast as you can. I mean, yeah, sure. Um, you have other items to go for, like face boots and stuff. But four staff is more. Um, four staff is really nice on you. Also, you have support for your team. So actually, I take it back. Don't go for your four staff. Go for a mechanism instead. Uh, go for a mechanism to be the supporter to play a supportive role to the to its full potential for your team, and then go for a four staff to help you stay alive and also give yourself some chase ability, some utility for your team. Uh, Muna CK CK, I think. Uh, you were playing a little bit more cautious than you should have been. No, actually, no. I take it back. There was a Rubik and a, yeah, there was a Rubik and a Spirit Breaker. You, you, you were playing as as cautiously as you possibly could. I think just a lot of times you're getting caught out. And also, um, I also think you didn't take advantage of your jungle. But even as I say that, I think I saw a few times where you were walking into the jungle, killing the creeps, and then walking back to lane. So, ignore me, guys. Ignore me. I honestly don't know what I'm talking about. You, um, you were just basically not played. Let's play that way. So um, that's, that's that's more so that's more so on a team on a team scale you guys are getting outplayed, but on a personal scale I I guess you were slightly getting outplayed by Spirit Breaker and by Rubik and by uh, Life Steal as well. So anyway, moving on to the dire side, uh, Clockwork. You build an Agonim Scepter. I was happy to see that. Uh, can't really say much because I don't play Clockworks much. Um, Spirit Breaker. I'll say be um yeah uh whenever you do charge somebody charge, charge. Or, or sorry, whenever you do charge somebody and you know you have a knight inside of you, charge that person, let knights do all the damage to that person, and then use your ulti on somebody else so you can lock them down too. Because um, there was a few times where you basically charged Zeus, and then uh, you had Lightsteel inside of you, so you charged Zeus, you hit Zeus, and then you punched him in the face one time, and you got a free bash, and then Lightsteel jumped out, and he did his damage. And then afterwards, when Zeus had like 20 HP left, you used your ulti on top of Zeus. Which is a waste of all the damage that your ulti use, or does. So definitely say that for somebody else. Um... And a lot of those times where you did charge Zeus, there was like a Phantalancer right beside him, or there was a Windrunner right beside him, or there was a Ursa right beside him. And all you had to do was just basically use your ulti on one of those other three targets and let Zeus die to Lifestealer, because Lifestealer is going to kill Zeus and another auto attack. Um, you can lock down Ursa to prepare Ursa for killing, or sorry, yeah, to prepare Ursa for killing for Lifestealer. So Lifestealer have, instead of just a single kill, he'll have a double kill because you help lock him down. So anyway, uh, just. Just uh, choose your ulti targets wisely, that's all I'm really trying to say. Uh, moving on to Chikiro. Um, don't really remember anything. I mean, you only died once. You built a mechanism. You built a four staff. I can't really complain much. I mean, there's, there's nothing much for me to say. I'm happy to see you have, you have a mechanism. I'm also really happy to see you have a four staff. Uh, and a, a Shiva's guard is really nice in team fights as well. So, I mean, there's not really much I can say. So... Overall, I am I am content with the, the Jakiro play. Uh, the Ice Pass, uh, they were on point. The the Macro Pyres were making me eat my words as far as how bad Macro Pyres. I still think Macro Pyres are a horrible skill, by the way. Uh, but anyway, moving on to uh, Rubik. Uh, Rubik, don't rush for that Bloodstone. Don't go for the Bloodstone so early. Uh, don't go for the Bloodstone at all, uh, in my personal opinion. I mean, if, if the game drags out to like a 60-minute mark, go for a Bloodstone. If the game drags out to like a... If the game's at the 30-minute mark and you have a Bloodstone... And you're not playing like a mid Rubik, then you're doing something wrong. If the game is at the, excuse me, if the game's at the 40 minute mark and you're not playing your mid Rubik and you have a Bloodstone, you're doing something wrong. If the game's at the 50 minute mark and you're not playing a mid Rubik and you have a Bloodstone, you're doing something wrong. Or either that, or you, you have a, a crap ton of farm because everybody just keeps dying and you do not have a crap ton of farm. 248 gold per minute does not, does not contest as a crap ton of farm as a support. Now 326 um, farm. 
sorry, 326 gold per minute as a support does count as a crap ton of armor. If you haven't noticed, I was uh, referring to the Jakiro because you guys were both playing a supportive role. So you rushing for that Bloodstone, you made yourself more useless to your team, not necessarily more useful to your team. So give yourself more utility because not only are you a Rubik who's actually really good at um, countering people who have those big spells like uh, countering CK with his Chaos Bolt countering Zeus with his ulti. Not only are you good at doing that, but you're also good at, or so you also should be good at providing your team with the survivability they need to actually push into them. So maybe building that pipe so when Zeus pops his ulti, then nobody feels the damage. Or maybe building yourself, <coughs> oh man, excuse me. Maybe building yourself that Force Staff so that way uh, if Ursa catches on top of somebody with the Earth Shock and starts doing damage to him, you can Force Staff your ally forward so they won't take any more damage. So just things like that. Just think about things like that. Think about things other than a Bloodstone. Because Bloodstone gives you really nice regen. Yeah, sure. Uh, regen is really good. And that's always what a anybody wants. Because regen is probably one of the biggest resources in the game that everybody wants to have more of. But as a support Rubik, Bloodstone is not ideal. So moving on, last but not least, Life Stealer. Um, you, yeah, uh, I would argue... Not going for male storm or male near so fast. Um, I would argue keeping the uh, male storm and then going for your basher and then going for your hyperstone and then finishing your male near. But I mean, that's that's really just me being nitpicky. That's not really me having any logical reason behind it. That's just something I prefer to see um, personally because I think a uh, male storm gives you enough attack speed to actually justify building a basher before you finish your male storm or f before you finish your male near. Even though male near gives you a lot more attack speed, but that hyperstone costs a lot of money. I mean, that, that thing costs 2,100 gold um, versus the Basher. Basher cost probably just as much. I don't really know the exact prices. Actually, I'm going to look it up real fast so I can make sure I give you guys accurate information. Accurate information. Skull Basher. Skull Basher cost exactly, approximately exactly, what's the price? Why can't I find the price? Why can't I find the price? 2,950 gold. So yeah, definitely go for the basher first, because, um, basher ahead of time, or, sorry, basher before you finish your mail in Because the basher's just a little bit more expensive. I mean, actually, a basher's probably exactly the price of the hyperstone plus the recipe. No, no, the recipe costs a little bit more. Never mind. I, I just think, I just personally think the basher would be a little bit more useful, because you attack fast because of rage. Um, having more attack speed is not really going to change much, because rage, I mean, I'm just saying, rage does a lot of, or gives you a, a Sorry, Rage is a very nice steroid and gives you a lot of attack speed. So, uh, finishing your finishing a Basher and then finishing your Melanir and then going back for your A Blade. I mean, I, I I would prefer to see that personally. But anyway, outside of that, uh, you play really well. Everybody played really well. Um, or sorry, everybody played relatively well um, on the Dire side. On the Radiant side, uh, you guys weren't really team fighting all that well together, which showed a lot. Actually, it showed a ton. Um, and and the score reflected that. So anyway, um, hope you, my name is Cold Blue. I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. Um, if you guys have any replays you guys want me to cast, please send them in. Um, it might take me forever to get to them because I do have a lot of replays or replays to cast that are queued up, and I probably won't get to them until like next week, which is actually bad because I ha like like I, I think I have a I think I have a replay that I got last month that I still haven't casted. So uh, yeah, I have to get around to those guys. Um, I'm very slow about these things, and that's actually pretty bad. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. And I'll see you guys whenever.